friends, welcome back to Homemade Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. Sorry if my voice sounds funny, we're just getting over a cold. And excuse all the dishes in the background, but at least they're clean, right? This is my life here. <laughs> we actually live here, so that's why we used to all this. All right, it's actually really late at our house, and I need to get this dinner on the table, like, right away. So I want to show you guys how simple and easy this meal is to throw together, especially if you have some stuff already going in your fridge and your freezer. There's some things that I like to have already cooked up, already chopped, to make my life a lot easier. Meal time a lot simpler, right? Because meals are hard to get on the table sometimes, at dinner time especially. So let me show you a couple things that I have already ready to go. So in my freezer, I like to get bell peppers when they're on sale and chop them up and put them in just a sandwich baggie. And I also like to have chopped onions already in my fridge. Now if I'm not going through these chopped onions, I can actually add them to my peppers and freeze this and just keep this in my freezer. You can go in your local grocery store in their freezer section and they usually sell a bag. I think it's like 12 ounces, 16 ounces, something like that of peppers and onions already cut up, just froze, ready to go for you. And that's kind of the play I did on this. So if I have a lot of onions, which we do this year, and if I have peppers, then I can freeze this and I can grab one of these out and throw it in dinner tonight. So I'm kind of doing that with those. The next thing is ground beef. I love to get ground beef and cook up a bunch of it all at one time. And then I freeze them again in sandwich baggies in one pound portions. So for dinner tonight, this recipe calls for one pound of ground beef. I can just grab this out completely frozen and we're gonna cook this up. Let me show you what ingredients we need and let's get this meal going. All right, you need a couple cloves of garlic. These are already peeled. You need some yellow squash. Our yellow squash didn't do well. This is actually all that we got this year. Um, salt and pepper, chili powder, paprika, some stewed tomatoes. These are just a quart of stewed tomatoes or you could use the same amount of juice if you don't want like all the chunks of tomatoes. Um, the one pound of ground beef, which I talked about a minute ago. One bell pepper and one chopped onion. And then three to four cups of cooked rice. I love to have cooked rice in our fridge. Our family is a big rice family, and so this hardly ever will go bad. And if I feel like it's getting there, then we'll throw it in the freezer. But it is so rare for rice to go bad in our fridge. It's beloved by all of my kids and especially my husband. So that is all the ingredients you need and let's whip this all together. So first I'm gonna take a saute pan and to it I'm gonna add my ground beef. This beef was a little bit fattier, so we'll see if I need to add any more grease to this pan. I'm gonna just warm this up again because that's already cooked. I'm gonna throw in my one chopped onion. I wanna show you guys how, how quickly this dinner will come together. So right now when I just turned this on, it's 632. I'm gonna let you know how fast we can get this done. I'm gonna also throw in my bell pepper and my two cloves of garlic that I just chopped. I'm gonna stick the lid on this. And this is a cast iron pan, so it does take a minute to heat up. But again, everything was frozen, or most of it was frozen, so I'm gonna just turn it on about medium low, let it get warming while we do our next step. All right, next I'm gonna use my food processor. And in here, I'm gonna turn it to my shredding blade. I don't wanna have this in the bottom. I've made that mistake before. I was doing cabbage one time, and I had the shredding blade, but I also had this part on down below it made it like like a paste so don't do that part so just the shredding part I like to use my food processor because it's we're gonna have two steps we're gonna shred up our yellow squash and we're also going to want to pulse our stewed tomatoes so we can do it all in one thing I like less dishes so that's what we're gonna do I'm just gonna take off the top and the bottom and cut it into a size that can fit down my chute so this recipe actually came from my in-laws. When Jesse and I got married, his mom gave me a whole bunch of family recipes, which was really fun, and this was one of them. It was one that he grew up doing, which makes a lot of sense. This uses a lot of um, garden produce, like your stewed tomatoes, your peppers, your onions, your garlic, um, 
and the yellow squash. So it's a great way to use this. I know there's a lot of different goulashes out there. Some use pasta, but we, again, are a rice family. We do like pasta, but this is just a really simple way to use some garden fresh ingredients. So there are all my squash. The recipe calls for between three to six squash, um, but it really depends on the size. Like I use six or seven, but mine were so small, it barely filled up this food processor. So, and if you have bigger ones, then maybe you only need two or three. So go off of that rather than the number, go off of how much it makes. Enough moisture is coming off of these um, frozen ingredients, the peppers and the meat. So I'm not gonna add any more oil or fat of any kind. But if your ground beef is leaner or anything like that, you might want to. So this is looking great. When your beef is all cooked and your peppers and onions are translucent, we're gonna throw in our squash that we just sauteed. Or <laughs> Words are difficult today. <laughs> We're gonna throw in our squash that we just shredded. And now I'm just gonna go and chop up my stewed tomatoes in this while this starts to cook up that squash. I'm gonna pop my lid back on there and let that go. So in here, I'm not gonna wash it because it's all gonna get mixed together anyway. I'm gonna throw in my stewed tomatoes. This is a quart jar which runs around four cups. So you might want to do two cups uh, or two cans of your stewed tomatoes that you buy at the store. All right, so I'm just gonna give this a little whirl. Not too much. My family's just not a huge like tomato chunky, well my kids specifically. One of them is like, I don't like the big chunks of tomato. So we just do a little blend on that. To all that, I'm gonna add my one quart of stewed tomatoes. I've heard there's so many different variations on a goulash. I would love to hear your guys' recipes down below, how you make goulash. If you have, well then can you go get it please? If you guys have a family recipe just like we do, this might be a different take on goulash than you usually make. So I would love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. I'm gonna add in some salt. This is all to your guys' liking, your taste, preferences. Some pepper. Don't you love that my pepper shaker is cracked? Maybe it's time to get a new one of those. Some chili powder. We'll just finish off that bottle. That was probably about a teaspoon. And my family really likes paprika. Sometimes in Spanish rice, which I have a really yummy recipe for Spanish rice, I will substitute the chili powder for just paprika because my family likes it that much more. So I probably did a tablespoon of that. I love this recipe because, like I said, I always keep rice in the fridge, but if you don't, maybe you might have some leftover rice. So we're gonna need three to four cups of the cooked rice. I always like to push the limits of my pot. It's like, is it gonna fit? Is it not gonna fit? It's like a little game I like to play while I'm cooking. <laughs> and that is the whole meal. Time check, it's 6.50 right now. Doesn't it look good? I love that it's a one pot dinner. You get your veggies, your carbs, your protein all together. It's a nice, healthy meal. All right, there you have it, guys. There's the squash goulash. On top of this, we like to put some garden tomato. Isn't this beautiful? No, this is not from our garden. <laughs> if you saw our video yesterday about that our garden froze, but this is from a friend's garden, but they were so sweet to share a precious garden tomato. We're so excited to dig into this one. There's nothing that, that can be a garden tomato. 
And then, so we like to put that on top of there. And also we like to top it with some homemade ranch dressing. I find homemade dressing is just so much better than the store-bought, and plus you know what's in it. So here we have mayo, milk, parsley, garlic, onion, salt and pepper. And I find this recipe, it's like an inspiration of the Trim Healthy Mama's recipe. They asked for yogurt in theirs instead of milk. So we have that, and that's what we like to put on top of it. give it a taste. It's the flavors of fall to me. I really hope you guys give this family recipe a try. It's definitely a fall staple around here, especially if we have yellow squash that grow. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me in my crazy kitchen tonight. I hope you will give this recipe a try, and if you do, let me know down in the comments below. I love to talk to you guys, and subscribe if you haven't already to join our YouTube family over here at Homemade Homestead. Have a wonderful evening or day, whatever time of day it is, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye now.